having seen the show, I think everyone did a good job. And both you, uh, I think you both have very different challenges in terms of drawing upon new experiences and coming over from your own established performance. A great one, by the way. What lessons did both of you uh, take from the games to apply to your performances in the series itself? Well, I mean, I took the lesson of uh, of uh, working on this for 20 years and trying to um, and and being able to um, take all that we had created before uh, to start this journey, which was a great gift. Um, and going from doing voiceover to doing motion capture, which helped me ease my way into doing motion capture on screen, which um, made this a lot easier. Yeah, all my prior experience working on it has helped to lead to this point. Mm, I think it was a little bit different for me just in terms, just because my character is, is new and she is an original character. Um, I did really um, try to soak in as much as I can about the Halo world, but as it is an adaptation, I just kind of really focused on the scripts and the kind of themes that we want to talk about, kind of, you know, corrupt politics and just dictatorship and like all that kind of stuff. And um, I guess uh, hope and love and everything like that. I just, that's just kind of what I really focused on trying to play Quan and trying to bring her to life as a new character. Thank you. Sean? Hello, my name is Sean and I'm with Disappointment Media. Um, how do you hope that your characters will inspire young women, especially young women who are gamers and watch the show? How? That's a good, how do you, think, how do you want them? How do I want them to? Um, I mean, I can draw from my own personal experience. You know, when I was a young kid, I, I didn't speak up for myself. I was, I, you know, quite um, shy and I think, you know, just kind of being an Asian woman, I was always kind of taught to just be the bigger person and always say sorry first. Like those were the kinds of messages that and lessons that I learned growing up. But playing Quan, I just kind of realize how important it is to stick up for yourself because if you don't, no one else is going to. Um, and just playing her for a very long period of time, I've learned so much from her just as myself, Yaren, and I really hope that other younger um, female audiences will be able to feel empowered and to feel that even though there's so much chaos going around in the world, you, you can still um, manage to, to find a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. We have so many different strong character, female characters in this show. I feel like there is an, a good example for every young woman out there to see different kinds of strength, different kinds of power coming from different, all different types of women in different places. So, you know, you and also women who, like an admiral who has so much power um, that it's, I, and yet the strength is different. So I hope that we have a lot of examples for, for young women to see strong, powerful women. Thank you. Yeah. Gabe? Hi, Gabriel Sigler with Bad Feeling Magazine in Montreal. My question is uh, for Jen. Jen, you've been a part of Halo for so long, an intrinsic part um, of the games. I was curious if there was anything specific you were hoping to see uh, when we finally got this big adaptation, and uh, what, what were your thoughts on the transition between the two different mediums? Um, it's been, what I wanted to see was, what I wanted to do was explore slightly different parts, you know, different parts or different, um, different aspects of this character, and I feel like I got to do that. Uh, and she's, you know, she's a little different, and yet she is familiar. Um, she's, so, and that was, that felt safe, a little safe for me, being pushed into this different, be pushed, being allowed to be stepping into this different medium. Um, so that was, there was some safety and some, uh, you know, pushing my boundaries, which was great which was really fun. And I can't, I can't give you too much information without spoiling things, so. <laughs> but yeah, I got to do some different stuff, which was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Nigel Chambers, Big Go Belt Media. Jen, let's just call it what it is. Your voice acting work is nothing short than legendary. Oh, thank but you. But that doesn't always guarantee that you will land the live action version. But as, the, as fans, you know, we just recently seen somebody like Kevin Conroy 
finally, after years being able to step into the live action version of Batman, and now you step in into this in the live action version, have you just taken a second to really just metabolize all of the feelings and emotions to land to this point, to see this come to life? What a lovely question. No. <laughs> Shall we do it now? Shall I process it with you all? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, it you know, I, I don't know how to... That is such a big sort of notion and a big idea that it's hard to actually process that and move forward. Um, and that's... A, it's... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to process that. Uh, yeah. It's a lot to process. It is a lot. It is overwhelming, <laughs> and it's an honor to be involved in this game for so long, and this story for so long, um, <clears throat> that I pinch myself daily. So, no, I haven't really taken that all in. I don't know how to process that, really, <laughs> in all honesty. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Paul. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you. Brady? Hi there, Brady Daters from Bloody Night in Cape Town, South Africa. Yeren, you've done a fair amount of work in the theatre. What was it like making the jump to a big series like Halo? <laughs> That's a big leap. Yeah. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't a leap, it was a... Vine. Yeah, literally. Airplane ride. Um, no, it's, it's, so, it's so, so different. Um, you know, theatres, you kind of have to you know, project and give everything to every single audience from the back row, where a screen is a lot more intimate. Um, but, you know, what's really great was that Pablo was really, really supportive of my kind of transition. And he's he was so, so lovely and, and gave me the biggest tips, was just there with me. And when you have someone who supports and cares for you, it just makes everything so much easier. And you feel like you're supported and cared for. He is a remarkable leader because I felt the same way. I felt like this is not my medium. This is not something I feel yeah. super comfortable with. And he was very supportive. Got yeah. thrown into the deep end and yeah. he taught me how to swim. And um, yeah, it definitely made going into Halo a much um, more special experience. Perfect. Thank you. Kate? Hey there, Kate Sanchez from But Why Though. Um, I am a huge fan of Halo and I have been for a really long time. So it's amazing to see this new chapter open up. Um, Yaren, specifically, I wanted to ask what it was like to step into a role that is so physical and also so emotional. Episode one, you go through it. Um, so is it, <laughs> is it hard to balance that physicality with that emotion and kind of shift between the two? Uh, 100% yes. Um, and I learned the hard way, unfortunately. I actually did kind of injure myself during that beginning, um, you know, war sequence and whatnot. Um, I think the biggest takeaway I've um, found is mental health, spiritual health, mm -hmm. physical health, that you can't beat that. And just trying to find a balance, whatever that is, in the off time trying to do what makes you happy so that at work you can do your best job possible. I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. But Quan, yeah, is a very emotionally um, expressive character. And, um, but the crew kind of give me the space and the time to allow me to access those emotions and that space. Um, so yeah, everyone's patience is also really, really something to um, note as well. Yeah. Great. And Frederick, last question. Hi, Frederick Nudy from Choice Cut Media. Glad to be here. Um, a question for both of you, I guess, would be what is the number one thing you want fans to learn about your character? The number one thing we want them to learn about our character. Hmm. I think for Quan, it's, um, I just want people to know that um, people, when they're going through, when, when you've lost something, people will go through so many different emotions and ways of dealing with it. And um, just the kind of, you know, humanity one has. Uh, sorry, I am going to re-say all that <laughs> stuff because my brain is co-appropriating everything that I'm trying to say. Yeah, I guess it's just like humans are very, very flawed. Um, and 
Kwan is a prime example. She's not perfect, you know, she's you know, she's fearless and she says a lot of things, but sometimes it kind kind of comes out of a place without thinking of any consequence. But it's just kind of like, how do you give someone time and space and love to grow to figure out their purpose in life? I think that's the biggest takeaway for Kwan. My character has a truly, at the beginning of this uh, experience, has a truly blank slate and um, is able to grasp uh, vast amounts of information faster than we can comprehend as human beings. Um, but what is truly, Im truly important, and because so she can be a guide, he, she can be your guide, she can be Master Chief's guide, right? In many ways. Um, but what she learns from him is equally important. And as he is discovering his humanity, so is she. She's understanding what humanity is. Um, and that is a is a beautiful experience to have. And I feel like that is a, I mean, I don't know what I want audience members to take away from that other than perhaps, you know, the ability to, um, that the ability to learn, you know, to learn from others can, can aid our humanity, can aid our empathy. Mm. Um, it is a pretty remarkable thing because I, I believe that she becomes more empathetic as this, series evolves yeah yeah and she's a computer so what <laughs> let's break it down ai in the building mm. yeah. big old bell